live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I am Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Wintraub. How are you doing today, Seth? I'm good. All right, get ready because we have a ton of news this week. I don't know what happened this week, but just news after news after news in the EV world. And uh, we're going to start out with uh, the uh, Tesla uh, semi-truck, uh, the quick little scoop that we had earlier this week. I know that that's one of the most like uh, requested um, like update that you guys want from us, like what's happening with the Tesla semi, what's happening with the Tesla semi. And uh, we last time we reported on it was earlier this year when we uh, exclusively confirmed that Tesla was setting up some production capacity at building just outside of Giga Factory, Nevada. And, um, now we get an update on that project. Uh, sources familiar with the matter are, are telling us that uh, Tesla has now completed the drive shaft production line and it, it's uh, it's currently working on debugging the, uh, the general assembly line, which is generally one of the last steps towards uh, reaching production ca capacity. Of course, we reported on the last time that uh, this, this production line is only aiming for about five trucks per week, so it's not it's not high volume production. This is still planned for uh, Gigafactory Austin at a later point. Not not clear when. It's not it's not a priority right now. Of course, in Austin you have the Mall Wide and the Cybertruck, so the the this is some high volume production would happen there later on, maybe sometime around this time next year or something like that. But for now, five trucks per week uh, at this production line would would, would be uh, a big deal. And we reported that a few of Tesla customers are are expecting deliveries by the end of the year, including uh, PepsiCo uh, out of the Modesto facility in, in California. And uh, we also recently reported that Tesla has been looking for um, service technician, especially for the Tesla Semi, and the job locations were, most of them were mobile though, so take that with a grain of salt, but they were still based at a bunch of different places in California. So we expect the first delivery to be there too. And also in Ontario, um, Canada, so we expect some early deliveries there also. And it makes sense since uh, Walmart Canada has been a big um, big uh, reservation holder for the Tesla Semi program. And they are based there in Ontario. So something to keep uh, in mind. Um, all right. So that was a quick little Tesla Semi update. It's, uh, it's exciting because we want to see that delivered to customer because it's hard to really, it's hard to overstate how impactful the vehicle can be if it does deliver on its um, cost per mile target and and its range. It, it, it will be able, even if it's like, I don't know, like every time we talk about it, there's a bunch of like trucking people that are like, eh, 300 miles, 500 miles, that's nothing. I can do like 800 miles in a day. I'm like, yeah, sure, we understand that. But still, 300 mile and 400 mile, 500 mile trucks would be able to cover the majority of routes in the US. and. Um, and, and that alone could, and, and if, if, and if they do that at a lower cost per mile or a lower overall cost of ownership, uh, it's, it's a game changer. Like this industry is that every penny counts on the, on per mile. And if you can reduce that, then you, you, you have a winner on your hand and people want to, going to want to have that truck and which going to result in, um, accelerating, removing gas powered miles and replacing them with electric powered miles. So and, and just you know, to, just to reiterate those, those trucks are uh, dependent on the 4680 cell production? Well, I haven't been able to confirm that exactly, uh, that it's using the cell, but that's what Tesla said at the event in September. And uh, I would assume that's the case. I mean, it, it, it would be a, a good program to use early cells from the pilot plant in Fremont, since it's a low volume program. Again, even though you have a lot of cells per truck, it's still five per week, so it's not, giant capacity in terms of megawatt hour but um I, I i'm i'm assuming right now but i cannot confirm it if, uh, it's the best i can do for now yeah and they have the what four model three battery uh four model three motors on there on each side yeah so the drive units the last time we uh we, we saw the prototype was still using the the, the model three drive units so we assume it's still the case but Maybe the uh, with with the new drive unit they, they develop it for the Model S. Yeah. Maybe they could have updated to that. I don't know that either. Wouldn't be so too surprising because it's apparently more efficient, lighter too, and with with, with a truck with a commercial truck the, the the weight is extremely important, of course, because uh, uh, it's the it, every pound that you can remove from the the, the truck itself, the tractor. 
uh, it's one pound that you can add to the capacity because there's a limit of 80,000 pounds total for, for, for the truck. And uh, you, you, want, you want that pound to be a paying pound and not some, something that you paid for that is right. a truck versus the cargo that you, uh, you transport. Correct, yeah. All right, uh, the next news is the confirmation from Elon Musk and a timeline on opening up the supercharger network to other automakers. So we've been reporting a lot on that in the last few uh, months because there's been a lot of indication that that's going to happen. And we discussed here on the podcast a few months ago that uh, uh, sources told us that Tesla is looking to open up the mobile app to um, to non-Tesla owners. They, they, they plan to have a bunch of new features on the app that are people or for people that don't own a Tesla that's going to uh, change the game a little bit and one of those features would be using the supercharger network as a non-Tesla owner so that would imply of course that Tesla is going to open the network to other automakers and um, we've seen also in Norway we've seen uh, Tesla confirmed that by September of 2022 they plan to open the station but that was specifically to obtain subsidies for for specific superchargers uh, stations so now it's, it's different Elon confirm in, in plain words that uh, they plan to, um, well, you commented at first here on we created our own connector as there was no standard back then and Tesla was the only maker of long range electric cars. So he's talking about the proprietary connector that Tesla used in North America. Um, it's only fairly, uh, it's one fairly slim connector for both low and high power charging. That said, we are making our supercharger network open to other EVs later this year. So you actually put a timeline on it too. And uh, he made it clear now that it's not specific to Norway or anything like that. He even added that eventually it's going to be all countries. But uh, he said that so so that implies that at first it might not be all countries, but eventually he plans to for it to be all countries. Uh, it's um it's a controversial move in the uh, Tesla community. Yeah, uh, I was surprised how many people were upset about against it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a lot of the supposedly Tesla fans that are, are not happy about it because they, they fear that it's going to overload the network, which is a, a, a fair concern, of course, I think. But yeah. uh, if you're a fan of the Tesla mission, I think it's obviously a good move mission-wise because you just added a bunch of charging options for other EVs. And that's good for the overall EV adoption, I think. But yeah, it needs to be done in a way that's uh, that makes sense uh, to to not overload the network. So uh, it's not it's not clear how it's going to happen because from what we heard on the HAP side, like Tesla is preparing to basically be able to like onboard anyone that wants to charge on the network. They, they can just use the app and, and charge on it. And in Europe, for example, everyone using the CCS standard, including Tesla now. They, they could literally do that. They could just open it up easily. In the US, they could also do it with with an adapter, but then I would have to assume that they would have to approve that with other automakers to make sure that everything works fine with the adapter and everything. So it, it might be a more complicated process then. And, and, but a more complicated, but also an easier one to um, control the, the new load on the network because you can just work with a specific automakers uh, approve their electric vehicles and, uh, and and release the adapter to them through uh, just normal cells. But yeah, it, there's definitely a bunch of different ways they can do it. And there's a bunch of ways that can be tough on the network and a bunch of ways that can, they can grow together, right? You, yep. you see positive outcome out of that, I assume, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good thing. Um, so I feel like we had uh, a tipster give us some information um, specifically about uh, a possible, uh, you know, like how how t Tesla would do it. Like it was there was something about an adapter, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so, like you know, if you're a Mustang Mach E driver and you wanted to use Tesla's network, you would buy an adapter for a couple hundred bucks. I would assume something like uh, what the Chatamo adapter costs for Tesla owners. Mm -hmm. um, and inside that adapter would be kind of like an ID that Tesla would use and you would give Tesla your credit card. And every time you filled up, uh, it would just debit your credit card, like an easy pass or something. And then, uh, you know, obviously you could still use other charging networks, but this one would just be like in the adapter it would be like the thing that talked to Tesla. That's, yeah. that's kind of like our, our, our understanding. Yeah, uh, but of course, that is for where you need an adapter. 
Uh, right in the I U.S. Would, I would I would assume that Tesla would first launch this this new feature in, in Europe, where where the CCS standard is widely adopted, and and it's uh, it, it would be easier to implement, I think. But again, that 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 brings you back to the issue of over, overloading the network. If anyone can just download the Tesla app, like you said, add your credit card on, on there, and then show up to the station, that that would likely create some problems. But uh, that would also bring a lot of revenue to Tesla, and then they could increase the capacity of the network in uh, correlation with um, where the, the demand is based on the, sorry, the new EVs getting on board. Right. So yeah, it's a, it's it's going to be interesting to watch how it plays out. And apparently we're going to see it. Well, I mean, this is still a long time. He said later this year, we are already in uh, July. So it, it could be in the next few months, but uh, let's be mindful of Elon time. All right. If you guys have any questions, any comments you want us to discuss, you can put in the comment section right now. We're going to get to them at the end of the show. We have obviously quite a few news items to discuss, but just letting you know. Also, if you like what you're seeing, what if you like the show, if you like the information we gave you guys or commentary, please give us a thumbs up. That helps the show, the show a lot. And uh, give us a review on your podcast app. That's also very appreciated. I'm trying to give to say that earlier on the show because I've been told that uh, it's worth listening at the end. Everyone is already disconnecting and moving on to other things, which is fair. <laughs> so uh, I'm giving it you guys a heads up if you kind enough to uh, to help us out on that front. It's always appreciated. But moving on to uh, the Tesla full self-driving package subscription uh, that was launched uh, hours after the show last week. So it's uh, it's kind of old news, but uh, we didn't discuss it on the show. So we're doing it now. And Tesla made the official announcement through, through the app, of course. And you, you can just go in there and buy the upgrade right away. Uh, there's some there's some differences there's some specifics that we need to discuss though and it was a bit controversial to later in the week uh, but the the first thing is that is the price uh, 199 per month for if you just have the normal autopilot so if you're trying to upgrade uh, so you that would give you the navigate on autopilot auto lane changes uh, auto park summon and traffic light and stop sign control and of course eventually uh, auto steer on city street whenever that comes out and uh, $1.99 per month, it's about what people were expecting. Uh, it's actually a bit on the lower side because yep. um, uh, if if you actually do the math in terms of, because um, Tesla always said it's going to be, it was going to make more sense to buy it or even to buy it on a long vehicle. And if you have a long vehicle on a 36 months loan, uh, it actually comes out to, I think, 7000 something instead of the 10,000 price that it costs to add it to the to the loan. So it actually makes more sense to to subscribe to it. So this is, this. It, it, but it, it's closed, it remains closed. Of course, it is, there's, there's a financing in, in, in play here and everything, but um, it, it's pretty close. Now, there's also a $99 subscription option uh, if you have the Enhanced Autopilot package, which, which is still a decent amount of people because uh, well, it was available for a while, and then Tesla brought it back for a while for people that didn't want to buy the full subject package. It's just one DNS to pilot, and that's $99 a month. And I think that's pretty pretty insane. I mean, especially now, it, it, it makes sense maybe later on with auto steers and things like that, but right now, it literally only gives you traffic light and stop sign control. So you're paying $99 a month for that until something else comes uh, other features comes on board and tesla has always been saying that we're going to increase the price when new features comes on board so if they do that then uh i don't know it's a harder sell for an answer to pilot people now where things got a lot more controversial and yep. and i think also i think that might be the reason where tesla was so slow to bring that option because everyone felt like hey it makes so much sense why don't tesla just bring a subscription option for that it makes so much sense and tesla was redragging their feet on that and we're like what makes no sense that's going to increase your take rate like crazy for the features and it gives the option for people to try the feature but what we didn't think is this um not everyone have the full self-driving computer the hardware 3.0 and Tesla promised you, promised everyone that bought a car since 2016 when they released Autopilot 2.0. They promised everyone, and this is a quote from Tesla, you have all the hardware necessary to achieve full self-driving. Now, Tesla was wrong about that. They admitted that they were wrong about that, and then they, they released Hardware 2.5, and then they released Hardware 3.0. And what they were saying is that we just we, we, we're going to let you upgrade to those. 
uh, for free. Uh, now Tesla Tesla found a little loophole that was very helpful, and it was it was fair for for people. Like no one complained about that because it made sense. Like we're gonna just upgrade you the computer, the new, the new full self driving computer, if you buy the full self driving package option. That was always an option, a software option, and not an hardware option. Um, it makes sense because the, we, the the those features were only enabled by the full self driving computer. So if 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 you didn't have a full self driving computer, you you had nothing to complain about, even though it was promised, because you, you didn't have the features anyway that it enabled. You didn't pay for those. So, but Tesla was able to recoup the cost of upgrading your computer through that software package. Now, that's that's more difficult to do with a subscription, and and that that's probably the explanation why it took so long for Tesla to release it. Is is now, if if you have a vehicle that supposedly have all the necessary hardware for full self-driving, and Tesla is offering a subscription to full self-driving, but that subscription requires you to have the latest full self-driving computer, the hardware 3.0, then you have to have the upgrade. And technically, I mean, it, by a law, probably, Tesla would have to for, for give it to you for free. But Tesla is actually charged, well, at the announcement, they charge you $1,000, for it, $1,500. And then a few days later, after a lot of criticism over it, they decreased it to $1,000. Still not great. <laughs> which, is, which is still a problem, in my, in my opinion. But because they did promise you, like, you have your car with full self-driving hardware in it. And then they figured it's it's not the case. Uh, so so it, it is it is Tesla's issue to do that. However, I do understand where they're coming from with it. They're like, oh, we, what if you just... Uh, buy it for a month, the upgrade, we upgrade the computer, and then you, you remove it. Well, we, we just got $200 of revenue from you, and we just gave you a $1,000 computer, whatever it costs. Right. So you guys came up with, you and Jamie, I think one of you said, well, that was me, huh? yeah, why why not just, you know, do, uh, you know, $1,500 worth of uh you know, upfront, like yeah, a credit. Basically, you you the customer does pay the thousand dollars for the upgrade, but they receive the thousand dollars as credit on the subscription. Five so, months. So they would only have the value or if ten they, months you, actually. Because uh, well, it's hundred hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, no, two hundred a month. But isn't it one hundred for the uh, people who already have? Well, you don't. You don't necessarily have EAP. Some people might. Some people don't. Right. It, it could. It could be both. So a hundred or, or two hundred. So it could be five to ten months. Right. Of free credit for for them to experience a full self driving package. And that's I, that I, makes perfect sense. Like I, I think that's a perfect solution. Yeah. Of course, Jamie wrote the article about uh, the the fifteen hundred where he, he laid out clearly the case for it being wrong with the entire timeline of every comment from Tesla regarding that. That that shows that Tesla that Tesla has promised everyone that they should get the full self driving capacity, and all they have to do is buy the software package. Um, now, uh, we 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 even might have been canceled <laughs> by Elon Musk or blocked by him on Twitter over that. We don't know for a fact that that's why, but he both he blocked both myself, which I didn't write the article, though I, I stand by the criticism in it, and the electric account. So that's why that. That hints at me that uh, it probably was why Elon blocked us. I have to but, say that's very strange because we've written much worse stuff <laughs> and much, you know, obviously much better stuff. We're all, very, you know, big Tesla fans. Yeah. But like, I feel like this, it's a very puzzling. I mean, you know, I'd be curious, like, what, what our audience thinks. Like, was that like the worst thing we've ever done uh, <laughs> in, in terms of, you know, upsetting the Tesla leadership? I don't, yeah. Uh, and then even that, the next day, Tesla is like, "All right, let's reduce it to a thousand dollars." So I think they know, like, that's it, it's not it's not the right thing. They just don't want to take the upfront cost. And I thought my compromise was a great idea to, to just solve the whole thing too. Like, if you do that, then there's no upfront cost to Tesla. And and uh, well, actually, like, what 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 irks me the most though is that if Tesla is confident enough in the full self driving package, then it shouldn't be a problem in the first place. They should just upgrade like they should have done, like they will promise people to. They just upgrade uh, when, when you purchase just a subscription for it, even if they cancel it after a month, yeah, because you're confident enough that they won't cancel because there's value for it. And to me, it shows like they don't, they're not confident enough that they have value uh, at $200 a month for what they're offering right now. 
which is um, which is not impossible because it's not full self driving, like it, it, it's just not. And that's where like that's where I have some issues because I think Tesla sort of painted itself in the corner now with the full self driving thing because of the name itself. Like for, when when I um, when Elon blocked me and I started discussing. On, on Twitter, where of course there's the more the harsher, like more extreme Tesla fans are on there. Uh, I, I do like to poke my head in, in that world every now and again, even though I think it's not very healthy. I do like to to get a pulse of like uh, what 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 the extreme Tesla fan thing, uh, and because 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 they are influential for sure. They, they especially influential on Elon himself because he there's kind of a feedback loop that he, he has with those people on Twitter. So I like to just get an idea of it. And what I got a lot from them is that now there seems to be some kind of dissociation between FSD and full self-driving and the meaning of it. Like they seem to just like it's, it's FSD. It's the package. That's what it is. Like the features that are in it is what it is. But, but the it's package, not, it it's doesn't not. mean full self-driving. Yeah, it's like, it's like the words don't have any meaning anymore. So a lot, oh. a lot of the argument was like the the people when Tesla said that they, they will achieve full self driving with the, the hardware there they would achieve the package what they are talking about in the package and not an actual full self driving capacity which uh, which makes no sense obviously like Tesla was selling people in the future you'll get an update that will give you a true level five full self driving capability Tesla always said that even mentioned the level five right. Uh, Though we've seen Elon type to move away from mentioning level five lately, but which also is worrying. But yeah, there seem to be this dissociation between, like, maybe even people are just calling it FSD now. They're not even calling it full self driving, and the, the name of the feature is full self driving capability. And and uh, what and you can play with that word capability. Okay, we we it can be the feature complete thing that Elon has been talking about for a while, but at the same time. They always said that the capability would eventually be confirmed and, and proven to be safer than human, and that will result in a full self-driving system that can be used without driver being responsible. But of course, that's in the future, but still and, and, and dependent on regulatory approval. But say we're not we're not even close to that yet. Anyway, what, what I'm what I'm afraid now is like people are bringing this argument that Tesla is not responsible for what they said back then because they were only selling like the package. The FSD package and not actual full self-driving capability, which if we start getting close to, to, to that, if, if this becomes like the norm for the for the super fans and everything and, and, and start to be influential or that, I think we are, we are getting into into some 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 very worrisome stuff. In my well, opinion. and and I think the courts will Wow. Yeah. So that's a good time to bring in our first comment from Jonathan Root. Should Tesla face a class action lawsuit for calling FSD full self-driving and taking people's money for over six years? That's it's, I mean, if that's not what they get, I mean, it's, you know, ambiguous and I'm sure there's a lot of language in the contract that, you know, maybe absolves Tesla from some, uh, you know, culpability, but, um, it's a good question. Like, uh, you know, so, you know, when I got my, uh, I leased a uh, Model X for three years and it came, it wasn't called full self-driving at the time. It was like, you know, enhanced autopilot or whatever. Um, I got a check back uh, from Tesla before I gave back the the Model X. And it was, you know, it was a pretty healthy check. I think it was like a thousand bucks or something. And I couldn't figure out what it was for, but I think it might've been like a preemptive, like, you know, don't sue us for not get, delivering, you know, enhanced autopilot during your, your time. There was something about an enhanced autopilot. That yeah. Happened. Well, yeah, there, there was, there was some, some, uh, problems there that Tesla had to back, uh, pedal on because of course they, they, they sold the package against the pilot with, uh, and full self-driving with uh, the idea that the, that the price will only increase with capabilities. And that wasn't the case at one point Tesla did reduce the pricing and, um, and a lot of people we criticize that of course and a lot of a lot of tesla fans were like why are you doing criticizing tesla reducing prices tesla is always good reducing prices like sure i'm always for reducing prices however if you're reducing prices on features that were never delivered in the first place then that's where i have an issue because the people that pay for them the full price they never got those features so why should they pay the full price and i think that might be uh, what happened with you there i think you might have 
got a refund on, on having paid the higher price for the EEP when, uh, when it was reduced later on. That's probably right. And then that's fair. That's perfectly fair. But of course, you cannot, you, you're taking money away from Tesla. You so do you do think that. Tesla is going to be susceptible to a class action lawsuit about FSD? Because it's not coming this year. Like, well, I, I think we're not there yet. And th that's a crazy thing. Like, it, it, even though I'm critical of Tesla's approach with the FSD package, I'm still I still think Tesla is the most likely company to deliver a truthful self-driving uh, system in the near future. I, I I do like the vision only approach. I do like the fact that they're collecting so much data from 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 the fleet. Um, it's just that, and I, I'm not opposed to pre-selling the features like they like like they are doing. It's just that. It, it is they're painting themselves in a the corner it, it is a minefield when, when, when you do that so you have you have to do it perfectly otherwise you're gonna cri get criticized because you, you have people that bought the features years ago knowing that it would take years to, to deliver it but when you do things like that you have a, a, a loop on you like a, it magnifies it and uh, and people are gonna be upset, I think, and and, and it, it, that that and that's my big thing with um, the Tesla super fans that are just they're just looking at Tesla side of you. Um, look, I'm not being affected by it. I, I I bought the full price. I'm not I'm not one of those people that I'm looking at was looking at the subscription service. I already paid for it. I already uh, it's already done. But Me too. If if I put myself in the shoes of people that bought a Model Three or a Model S pre full uh, pre uh, Outward 3.0 and they were waiting for the subscription service to get it and they, they they bought the car being told that the car has all the hardware in there to be full self-driving and now they're told no you have to pay a thousand bucks to get that hardware in order to buy the subscription service that, that, that that's where you, you lose me like either either you i mean we already knew that tesla was wrong when they said that they had all the other work to be full self-driving in 2016 when they, they announced that we, we knew they were wrong they admitted to be wrong now the question is are you make it right or are you are you just are you just gonna uh or, or are you just gonna ride with it like you're, you're doing it with the, the, the subscription service which which appears to be what they're doing right now even though they did reduce it by 500 bucks that's good but it's not great uh in my opinion all right we have plenty of other news to talk about, so we should move on. I know that FSD was a big uh, subject of discussion this week. But... Um, what's the next one? Oh yeah, Maxwell. That was that was kind of uh, out of the left field this week. A, a company called UCAP, an ultra capacitor, a new ultra, ultra capacitor company, announced that uh, Tesla sold them back Maxwell ultra capacitor business. So they didn't. They didn't necessarily sell back Maxwell itself, the old company, but they, they bought the Korean operation, which is where they were producing the ultra capacitor in the first place. So the, the, the all the manufacturing capacity there. So they bought Maxwell Technology Korea and they bought uh, what they quoted as other related assets, including the Maxwell brand. So now like Tesla doesn't even own the Maxwell brand any, anymore. And uh, who bought it? UCAP is actually a company that was founded by a bunch of former Maxwell Maxwell and then later on Tesla uh, executive that were more on the ultra capacitor side. So we, we knew at this point that Tesla was was mostly buying Maxwell for the dry electrode technology that uh, they incorporated into the 4680 cells that were on bill at the, the battery day last year. So that it was pretty clear at that point that we're doing that. Tesla was trying to integrate the ultra capacitor business in, into them. Like they, they, we reported on that last year, they did a few moves and, and then uh, integrated the business. But there was never any clear indication that they would use the ultra capacitor inside their vehicles or, or any any product, any energy storage product. Uh, and, and now it becomes pretty clear that Tesla never really intended to. The, so the, the executive left Tesla last year, a lot of them, and uh, funded that, that company, uh, UCAP. And, and now Tesla sold uh, all the ultra capacitor stuff to them and including the Maxwell brand. And that kind of dashes our our hopes or our curiosity about Tesla using ultra capacitors. Uh, we know that uh, CEO Elon Musk uh, has some expertise in ultra capacitors from his uh, college days, and uh, you know the the idea isn't that ultra capacitors could necessarily um, get rid of lithium, but 
you know, maybe a hybrid system, maybe a hybrid system for like faster charging is, you know, some people were, have been talked about talking about, or, you know, any other kind of hybrid system, you know, maybe, you know, instead of uh, launch mode, you have like ultra capacitor mode where, you know, it just loads up the capacitor with power and, and, you know, you shoot out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was just kind of like, oh, okay. I guess Tesla's not interested in ultra capacitors anymore. And I think yeah, there was we, a, there was a tweet by Elon. You probably didn't see it, Fred. Uh, <laughs> uh, something about uh, yeah, we just want the lithium. You know. Yeah, I mean, you already said that that Maxwell has some interesting like core technology, and he specifically mentioned a dry electrode. So that that was right after the acquisition uh, was two years ago. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get I get your point, like because. People said, what's the downside to integrating it, them into, especially maybe the more high performance ones? And I, I mean, other than adding complexity, I don't I don't see much downside to it. Uh, again, it's a, it's like a balance. You're going to have a balance between the, the lithium ion and the ultra capacitor, but apparently they, you don't, they don't see it worded. And, and to be fair, I don't, I don't know of a, any other vehicle trying to do that. Lamborghini at some point, they the uh, they had this uh, partnership with I want to say the MIT to integrate ultra capacitor in their mm. in their supercars, uh, but it was just a concept. I don't think it's it's hitting production anytime soon, if if ever. Yeah, I think the big problem with capacitors is they're a little bit leaky. So you know you put a bunch of oh. power in them and they can't hold it. So um, what would be cool is like if you could charge a car really fast and it would just you know charge the capacitor all the way up and then slowly uh, charge you know as it's leaking the batteries while you're driving down the road. And then the other thing is like, you know, you want to go fast instead of, you know, launch mode, you would just charge the super capacitor up and then just let it all out at once. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we have here like uh, Zafod Beeblebrox that commented that uh, caps takes too much space for any practical power buffer. Uh, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a big one for sure. They're not, they're, they're not really uh, energy dense, but they are, power dense though they have a high power density it's just that it would be for like a short just a short power boost yeah uh, but yeah maybe, maybe still then you might be right that it would it would it would have had too much space too much complexity to the power train it might be not worth it that's a, probably a good point all right uh, another news here we, we're starting to uh, to learn that uh tesla has put a hold on all the model s deliveries in the u.s uh, new model s delivery to plaid in the, in the long range it, it's not clear why but and we got a lot of um, a lot of uh, new buyers reaching out to us, and it's all over the forums. If you go on Reddit on the Summer Club, there's there's ton of reports about it that people are being uh, th their deliveries are being delayed, and a lot of them are being told that there's just a hole and they're not delivering anything since last weekend. Um, it's not clear why, and that's where things get a little bit uh, weird. It's just like everyone is being told like different things. Like all the owners are being uh, other than the, the more consistent that there's an old and cannot give that out. And people are not even like uh, willing to, uh, I mean, Tesla advisor are not even willing to give new delivery dates. Cause so that means there's, a, there's an actual old on, on the vehicles and the, until the old is removed, they're not willing to give you a new date. Um, but the reasons behind them, they are all over the place. Like some people are talking about the software update. Some people are talking about a new exp about people. I mean, like Tesla advisor telling the customers uh, that uh, there's a, a new inspection process being implemented, which makes little sense. Like the inspection process that's taking a week because because the cars are at the delivery centers, and so it's not like a production issues, or at least it's not like the cars are getting out of the factory and getting to the delivery centers. They're just not being delivered to the end customer. Um, but yeah, if if the the reasons for the all is all over the place like that, that tells me that Tesla is not telling that the advisor, the delivery staff, and the sales staff about what's the reason behind the issue. And a lot, I, 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 I did get some report from Tesla buyers being told by the advisor that we we just don't know. So I think those are the people that are actually telling the truth. It's just that it's just that it's a strange thing when you're you're like you you call your advisor and they're like. All right, so we're all set for my delivery set for tomorrow. It's like, I do have the car, but it's on old. I cannot deliver it to, to you. And they're like, okay, why? And they're like, actually, I don't know. No one is telling me this. They're just all on the car. That's that's just a weird thing to do. So I guess some people are just making it up. Uh, it's 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 not right. I'm not saying it's right, but it's not like it's also not right for Tesla just not to let, letting people know. Because what happens when you don't tell people? Then they, you make, 
So yeah, it's speculation. It so me- let's let's speculate since yeah. we don't have anything specific. One, there was a uh, a fire in Philadelphia. Um, yeah, we got it. It was kind of an interesting story. The guy who pinged us first was like, "Yeah, I'm an EM," or it was on Reddit or something. I'm an EMT, and we we talked to him directly. Uh, there was a <laughs> there was a a Tesla on fire just driving down the road. Yeah. Like, sounded like a pretty interesting story. So we followed yeah. up, and it sounded like. You know, it just, uh, there's some issues with it. Yeah, um, apparently the owner was in the car and he claimed to be locked in the car, but I don't know exactly, like probably, most most probably it was the the, the power went out after the, the fire started and he couldn't right. use the electronic rig and he was able to, to escape with the manual thing. So it wasn't exactly locked in the car. But yeah, it, the, that, that fire, uh, Tesla is apparently investigating it, but well, again, there's no there's no PR anymore. We can um, we cannot reach out, and know know what's happening. So some right. people are speculating that that there's an issue with uh, and, and uh, what what is worrying people is that one thing that Elon said about the delays from January to to, to June for delivering the the first small new Model S was to I'm quoting make sure that the battery pack the new battery pack is safe. So, so some people are like, all right, did, did something happen in testing? Right. And now there's, there's, there's some issue and Tesla went with it anyway. And now, now this happened and how could it be a risk for other cars? So again, that's all speculation. We don't, we don't know, but there is a hole right now. Some people are speculating that it's software related because there right. has, there have been some issues with the new Model S software. Uh, it came with a new UI and that hasn't been released to other cars just yet, but, um, so, so there might be some issues with that. I don't know that there's some issue that would really prevent you from from delivering the car, but yeah, um, I, I I would assume that it's not a safety issue because I would hope that if it is, then Tesla is not just holding current delivery, but would let current drivers know because they delivered a few thousand of those already. So yeah, I mean, uh, we we saw MKBHD's uh, video. He didn't seem to have any problems with uh, the hardware or the software, which was strange because, mm-hmm. like, pretty much everybody else was talking, mm-hmm. you know, about software glitches. Yeah, it's a big buggy right now. But yeah, if it's that, but even then, like, I would I would assume that Tesla would would, would deliver those anyway, uh, and just update later would be the first time you do that. At the same time, they're not in the hand of quarter delivery rush, so they're not like they don't feel pressure to deliver the cars anyway. Right, uh, and that's not the big numbers area anyway. Yeah, 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 for sure. But uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. If you guys have any information about it, um, if you're waiting for a delivery and um, your Tesla advisor gives you uh, more important, more like valid details, because again, I would, I would be careful like taking what they said a word just because of that, but. All right, uh, another news. Last night, Tesla did one of their overnight price increases. Well, we won't we won't spend too much time on that, like we, we do every time. It's just like we, we, it's every two we, weeks, right? Yeah. The algorithm, yeah, yeah. the algorithm checks the inventory. Oh, I, uh, I opened that wrong that. All right, but now it's going. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so we'll just we'll just matter of factly tell us you tell you what the actual increase. So it's a thousand dollar both on the Model Y long range dual motor and a thousand dollars on the Model Three long range dual motor. So for for the um, the Model Y, uh, it went from fifty three to fifty four thousand dollars, and now four thousand dollars increased over the last few months. And for the Model Three, it went uh, from forty nine thousand dollars to fifty thousand dollars. Uh, which is a three thousand five hundred dollar increase over the last few months. So, so if you had them up, it's significant. But uh, that's also a bigger one because the, the the last one, the last few ones were all five hundreds. This one's a thousand, so it's a bigger upgrade. We don't know the reason exactly why, but uh, what's happened there? I'm having a bug with our night night mode. Yeah, weird. The the link is not. That's weird. Um, yeah, the Elon previously when when uh, referencing the the last few five hundred dollars incremental uh, price increases, he did say that it was related to supply chain issues. We know there's a lot of inflation right now too. Uh, I think it's closer to five percent. So this is this this affecting a lot of prices of everything really. So Tesla is not immune to that. So that could be it too. But no official words on it, of course. All right. Another thing that happened right after last week's podcast was uh, the launch of Tesla's uh, own virtual power plant in, uh, in in California. 
Uh, so Tesla, Tesla had a page on its website. And of course, there's a famous virtual power plant in Australia that Tesla has been doing, uh, hoping to get 50,000 people on it. Uh, I think now it's closer to 5,000 at the moment. Uh, in, in the US, there's a company called Swell that was started by a former Tesla employee. And they used Tesla power walls to create virtual power plants all around the US, including some in California. But now Tesla is launching its own one. So they, they want to use the current user base of Powerwall owners in California, which is apparently about 50,000 of them, and uh, have them opt in into this virtual power plant program to, to help the, the grid when, when needed. Uh, and apparently the reason behind it, and that's what we just learned uh, yesterday when Tesla launched the official program, because uh, uh, yesterday was the, the first day that you can actually opt in uh, if you're eligible. And uh, they released more details about it. And Tesla is presenting it as a, as a good, as a public good initiative. So it's not, it, you, 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 there's not gonna be any compensation involved. Uh, unless, well, if you're on the net metering plan and you, you send money back to the grid, you, you still get your money. But this, the, the, in this case, it's not, it's not optimized for you to get the most money out of it in your regular net metering program if you have solar and, and, and the power wall. In this case, it's like if there's an event happening where you do need that power, well, you have a reserve, that you can set so don't don't drain my power wall below that but if it's not below that then then it's then it's okay and you can um you can use my power i'm gonna, just going to go to the other one because there's an example of uh the event alert so you get on your phone you get this little notification here so a virtual uh so i like solar roof or virtual power plant well, I don't know what this is solar roof because it's more related to power walls, but virtual power plant event is scheduled today from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So they think that the grid is going to need your power and they, they're going to drain it on, until you reach your limit that is set prior to the event. And they are presenting it as a, a as a public good because they, they are expecting the grid in California to be under quite some stress this summer. Uh, this It's already been on quite, quite some stress because of uh, record high temperature. So people are cranking up their ECs, but also on the uh, on the power generation side, there's been some issue, uh, some issues because of the drought. So even even things like the Hoover Dam now is, uh, which is in Nevada, and is it, is it just in Nevada? It's in Arizona too. It's like I think it's on the, it's in between the two. But anyway, it's in, the, in that region. But it does power uh, send power to California, and now it's operating. I think at like sixty percent capacity because of the drought. So this is affecting uh, the, the power that uh, the power capacity of the Californian grid. So Tesla now has feels like they have enough people with power walls in California that if they get together and, and send some some electricity back to the grid for a period of time, it, it, it can be significant enough to be helpful. So they are asking people if you're a client of PG&E, uh, uh, SDG&E, and SCE. Uh, and you have a power wall, you can just go on your Tesla app, uh, go to uh, settings, and then scroll down to Tesla virtual power plant, and then you switch it on, and um, that gives you the, the the prompts to enroll in the program if you can. Now, this isn't, you, you said it's not, uh, you know, you don't earn money back from this. Like, you're, you're basically selling power to the grid at super peak times, but nobody, not Tesla, not the the power wall owners are getting any kind of reimbursement for it besides, you know, doing backwards on your. Yeah. Your it, it, it sounds like that. It's not, if you're already on a net metering program, I think you still do get the, 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 just a pre set amount of money per kilowatt hour that you send back to the grid, but there's no, it's, it's not a specific grid service that Tesla is, is building and getting compensated for. That's a shame because that's a lot of money. Uh, you know that that's how Enron would you know made so much money was they were selling super peak time, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's interesting that um, they did say that it's for now though, and it's right. in the future they, they could, and uh, and it, maybe it's and more that, like a proof of concept. Yeah, and that makes sense. That makes sense to to use that as a proof of concept and later on because it is an extremely valuable grid service that pg and E and all those guys should pay for because it, it, it's their it's. I mean, it's not. I'm not saying they're fault. Like it's. It, there's. Though they've been responsible for some of, the, yeah. uh, of shitty things too in the past, but uh, it, they they are providing a service, uh, an utility service, and they, they need to plan for it. And and that the peak demand is part of it. 
and uh, they, they need to deploy capacity for that. And they've been doing some things like that, like pg and &E. Sir just said that one gigawatt hour mega pack project with Tesla. So they, they've been doing it on that front, but this this distributed kind of um, energy capacity group together to to help the grid. That's that's been something that's been discussed for a while now. And uh, this, depending on the uh, take rate of the enrollment, it, it could be one of the bigger one. Because because again, I think as I said, there's about fifty thousand uh, Tesla power wall owners in. Uh, in California, maybe not fifty thousand power owners, but fifty thousand power walls, because a lot of people have more than one. That would make more sense, I think. All right, we had another exclusive this week too with Tesla. Um, the the Salesforce Tesla is going on a new hiring spree for Salesforce. So if you remember, it was just uh, what two, two, two years ago that Tesla was closing all their stores and going online, and uh, every sales employees fear for their job. <laughs> Well, we're, we're quite far from that now because Tesla has more sales employees than ever now. And uh, they are going on a new hiring spree to add to them. Uh, though they are mostly going with part-time employees. So uh, there's hundreds of jobs that are being added right now throughout North America, especially in the U.S., to, to add part-time salespeople. And, uh, of course, that's a cost-cutting uh, initiative because uh, you, you Part-time people have fewer benefits, and also Tesla doesn't provide them with like laptops and and cell phones like they do with full-time employees uh, to do the job. They have to share a, a bunch of a bunch of stuff. But I mean, I'm okay with that, especially that Tesla has a path to let people become a full-time employee. So the best part-time employees have an opportunity to become full-time and get a high-paying job with uh, better benefits. And so, so you, you, you're able to get the, the best people and it's still a good job part-time, especially for like uh, students and, and people like that. Uh, uh, I know I would have loved that job as a student, uh, part-time, just talking about Tesla all the time. It's basically what I'm doing now. But um, also you get to drive the car, like giving test drive people. That's, that's pretty fun. Like being, I mean, I've given hundreds of Tesla test drive to people and seeing them press the accelerator, like telling them, all right, press the accelerator now. That's always the funnest thing to see, to see their smile happening and everything. But yeah, you get to do, I, I know a lot of uh, retirees are doing that too. Uh, when I went to Tesla stores, I've talked to a bunch of people that are, are like retired and they're just like, oh, I'll, I'll get a, a part-time job at Tesla. I'm a big fan of the company, big fan of electric vehicles and it's a fun part-time job. So uh, if, if it's something that interests you right now, go look on Tesla's website because they, they are adding a ton of those right now. And uh, we believe it's in anticipation for, for uh, the uh, tax credit in the U.S. too, because uh, we know that the reform is coming. They're trying to pass that by the end of the year, though it was supposed to come after the uh, infrastructure bill. And that, that is getting uh, some pushback from Republicans in, in, in the House right now. So they, are, they will need to take care of that before moving to the, the tax reform that needs to be done for the, for the EV incentive in the, at the federal level. But it's just still expected to happen by the end of the year. And if, if it does, I mean, it's going to be a, bonan a bonanza for Tesla. They, they got completely removed access to the federal tax credit, and they're still, they still having record sales in the U.S. Like they, the sale didn't drop. So they, they kept selling more. Of course, that it, it matched the launch of the Model Y, of course, that, that, that helped. But still, uh, it, it, it's impressive. So if, if they get back the incentive, and also there's rumors that the incentive could be even higher, uh, $10,000 or even... Better than being higher if it's not uh, a tax credit, but if it's a zero rebate at the purchase, that 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 would be even crazier. It could be half. It could be five thousand dollars and still have a higher impact. I think if they do that, and that might be what is going to happen because that ten thousand and twelve thousand dollars they're talking about, I think that might be more of a negotiating uh, tactic than anything else. Uh, right. To, you know, you start higher and maybe you get something below. But uh, yeah, I mean. Tesla is already pretty much production constrained, but it's going to depend with uh, Geofactory Texas how that ramp up goes. But if if that ramp up goes, then yes, we're going to be a, see a boom in sales in the U.S. But uh, it, either way, I think if if the tax credit goes on um, and be reinstated for Tesla buyers, I think gonna, Tesla is going to sell everything they can make in the U.S. All right, we're going to move on from Tesla news now. I think are we? Yep. Um, all right, so a few more news items, and then we're gonna we, we're gonna jump into the the comments. So, guys, uh, if you have any questions, put them now. So we're gonna get them to them in just a few minutes. Uh, GM today announced uh, they're doing this recall that we've been pushing for for the the Bolt EV. 
uh, after a few more fires that came even after their software uh, fix. Now, now the uh, so said so you've been following this or the closing at me, but I, I read the news today, and then we we had a bunch of questions on, on this, and and to to be to GM's credit, they try to answer what what they, they can, though there's still some unanswered questions. But now, it, even <laughs> it does sound like they're gonna replace basically all. Uh, maybe not all battery packs, but at least in all, uh, some modules in all battery packs in from the 2017 to 2019 Bolt EVs, right? So their con their communication hasn't been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the people working there uh, in GM comms have been doing a great job of trying to get mm -hmm. us answers, but there's like kind of a loggerhead behind the scenes where like mm -hmm. you can tell like the lawyers are like, don't do that, don't you know, don't say anything about that. Um, so it does sound so you know if you read cnbc it sounds like everybody's getting new batteries that's not the case um it sounds like gm will look you know using their software which you know frankly like there were still you know two fires after the software was installed but using their software they're going to find the bad modules or the modules that are in question and if you have a bad module like even one that's not you know already starting to run away or have problems but it, it you know there's two there's two different um problems with the modules and if both problems happen they catch on fire so basically they're going to look at the modules if there's a problem you know either one of the problems they're going to swap it out so there, there's not, a problem sorry i mean i think there's a problem with the modules and the problem with the cells too right uh or so the, there's a problem with the cells the problem is with the cells but they're going to replace the modules because you can't yeah. just like pull out the cells yeah yeah so um because because you know, if you see modules then then the, like the blame is with is, is with gm because they're the one more with GM, the yeah. module well, well the actual problem is with the cells but they are just going to replace the modules because i think they cannot replace the cells right just right one cells all the, the packing right and so basically you know if this works as it's supposed to if there's any modules that are all susceptible to catching on fire gm will replace them that's you know if that's true that's great the problem is, is that GM has been making a bunch of promises uh, since these all started and each one, you know, has kind of had to been walked back or changed or whatever. So, you know, is this the time that uh, Lucy leaves the football there for you to kick or is she going to pull it out again? You know, that's that's kind of the uh, analogy I, I kind of feel about at this point. Um, but it, it, one of Sean's question to GM and their, their answers, well, GM, I, we, we, Sean asks, will you replace all 2017, 2019 Korean produced batteries or just some? And GM answered the same vehicle population that was affected by the original recall, which was all 2017, all 2019, and the early part of 2019. Correct. Will have replacements. Right. Some modules. Yeah. So it's not all the whole battery pack, but it sounds like all cars are going to have a replacement. A replacement. To yeah. The agree. Uh, which is which is kind of weird because it's confusing to me because they were saying like oh we have software to detect if there's an issue or not, but then all battery pack are gonna get at least some module re replaced or all packs. So it's it's kind of confusing to me. Like the, uh, yeah, and it's not the whole pack. So my understanding again, this is you know trying to translate GM PR speak to you know real reality. Is that you take it to the the service center? They pull the battery out. They pull some modules out. They put some new modules in, and you go away. So that's what I think is happening. But you know, to be honest, like if I still had my 2017 Bolt, I would be following this a lot closer. Yeah, uh, but I mean, to, to a lot of credit to Sean Graham, who's been leading yeah, the coverage on this for, for us. Sure. I, I would I would credit him to even be partly responsible for for the recall even happening because absolutely we, we've been uh we, we've been pushing a lot of coverage on this to be critical on on jim's response to the original fires and uh how it happened uh and i'm still a bit critical too because there's one part that i don't like where they acknowledge two specific defects being found in in the, in the packs and they are not telling us what those are and this goes back to my original theory where uh Hyundai had issues with the LG cells, not produced at the same factory, but still it was LG cells that had a problem with them. They had some fires and then they replaced them all uh, or they are in the process of doing so. Uh, 
but then GM, so people were like, why are you not doing the same GM? Because the, the, the problem seems extremely similar. And, uh, and GM were like, no, it's not the same problem. We're not telling you what the problem is, but we know and it's not the same problem. And, that, and that's still what they're telling us. It's, there's two defects, but they're not telling us what the defects are. Yeah. And the fact that they're still not telling us now that they are replacing the packs, that's, that makes me think that it, 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 they were wrong about saying that it wasn't the same defect as, as, as Hyundai. And, and, and it just would make them look very bad that they are, were not as proactive as Hyundai to replace the cells. And that comes back to my other theory that Hyundai just broke the relationship with LG, went to SK Innovation for the new vehicles, while GM doesn't have that luxury because they have a giant partnership with LG with the Ultium battery packs. So they have to, 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 to stay loyal to LG. So it's, it's a, it's a, again, that's meant there's a little, a little bit of speculation here on my part, but the, the more GM refuses to actually release information about the defects, even though they claim to know about it now, like uh, at first they were just, it was not clear, but now they're like, we have two defects. We're just not able to provide information about it. It's yeah. sus, uh, sus as the kids say these days. Yes. Uh, and it'll also like maybe some folks uh, who look at, um, you know, LG earning statements or LG chem battery earning statements might see like, Oh, this big write off of, you know, like $20 billion that, uh, you know, for replacing battery packs or something, mm -hmm. it might it might show that LG is actually behind the scenes doing, you know, paying for a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and they are they are partly paying for the Hyundai uh, replacement. Oh, there it's not partly; it's mostly. Mostly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mercedes Benz had a big announcement this week. Uh, they uh, they announced a new plan to go all electric by the end of twenty uh, of the of the decade. So by twenty thirty. Pretty quick because they don't have much electric right now. Yeah, I mean, they, well, they have a lot coming soon, like very soon. Like the EQS is ramping up. They have the EQA. They have a, uh, the the new version of the EQS. They have a, uh, not the EQS, the EQC. Um, they they have a bunch of things in the works. So we know it's coming. It's just there's not quite some volume yet. So when they say 2030, it's uh, uh, a bit surprising. But well, uh, I mean, the, if you go to a U.S. Mercedes dealer right now, there's no yeah. AVs on the lot. Yeah, that's that's the issue so, here. Of course, they're prioritizing Europe, where the regulations right. are, are f favorable to EVs. But so the, in the plan, there are some some things that are, are, are interesting. Like the, the they are focused on battery cell uh, production. So they're saying that they are new partnership in Europe to produce battery cells. They're gonna have several uh, gigafactory. They're trying to secure more than 200 gigawatt hour of battery cell in eight gigafactories. I don't think they're going to have their own gigafactories, but partnership with, with other people, much like uh, Volkswagen has with uh, Lord Bolt, for example, and, uh, and uh, QuantumScape. They, they are, what they announced too is that they're working on three new electric vehicle architecture that's going to launch in 2025. So uh, by architecture, I'm assuming they mean like vehicle platform, so that's going to enable several different models per platform and uh so so that's coming 2025 and i assume that's where the real ramp up is going to come from for former cities but by the end by the end of next year they already say that they're going to have an all electric vehicle in every segment which i, I think is going to be true with the eqa as crossover eqc as a suv eqs as a sedan and uh, a few other cars are coming too so this is going to be like their first initial offering, but then it's going to be a higher ramp up in volume production coming with sickering battery cells and those three new vehicle platform in 2025. They also discussed this, this new uh, concept vehicle that's going to be on bill next year. They already talked about it actually last year. Uh, wasn't much information about it back then, but what is it called? It's called the Vision EQXX, and uh, it was presented as an ultra-efficient electric car. Last year, they said it's going to have a range of over 750 miles, which is 1,200 kilometers, which is pretty crazy. Now, with the update that they released this week, they actually revised that down to a thousand, over 1,000 kilometers, so over 620 miles, which is still a lot. It's uh, basically what this announced with the Roadster. Kind of looks but, like a frog, like the front. See the eyes? <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, it looks like Kermit a little bit. Yeah, I don't even know what that is, actually, for the car. Hmm. It's like uh, an air vent or something. Yeah, maybe air intake. Yeah, but on the hood like that, it's kind of strange. 
Yeah, they they are. are uh, it's it's reminiscent really of what Audi is doing with the Artemis project, where they want to really develop a whole new platform that's super efficient. And uh, however, Artemis is going to actually result in a new vehicle that's going to reach production. This this is a concept for for Mercedes here, the Vision EQXX. It's a it's a concept that they're developing in a high performance, super efficient powertrain, and then they're going to use that some improvement that they create with that to incorporate in their new electric vehicle platforms that are coming in 2025. So something to, to, to check, uh, be on the lookout for, because I think it's going to be an interesting concept vehicle, but uh, it's still just that, the concept. It's not that exciting. All right, should we jump into the comments? Yes, let's do that. All right, why so much drama with the yoke? Uh, when Knight Rider series appeared, which is from the 80s, everybody wanted Kit, that's true. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you have to do any K turns though with uh, Kit. Um, yeah, here's my take on the on the yoke. Okay, because I, I I just reported on it today, and I, again I got attacked by the Tesla super fan on it, and it, it just it drives me crazy because look at this. It's it's pretty simple with, with the yoke. Yeah, but you can do a quick pros and con list. You have pros like Elon said. Yes, it does improve visibility on the instrument cluster, and and, and that's good. Uh, also in the pros column, you can add looks cool. That's objective, but I think it's it's objectively true too. I think it looks super cool, like you said, reminds you of kit and uh, sports cars and and things like that. On the cons though, it's undeniable that it's worst at low speeds. That's undeniable. If you don't have a progressive steering system that change with the speeds, it is worse, and it doesn't have that. We were surprised it doesn't have that. We thought that Tesla, of course, if they're bringing that wheel to market they're gonna have a progressive steering uh either to drive by wire or through some mechanical linkage which would be not ideal of course but because it's more complicated but still we thought they would have that they didn't i'm, I'm shocked honestly i thought that i wouldn't do that of course i'm less shocked when i think about the self-driving stuff they, they basically thought by now they can have a full self-driving system and then it doesn't matter because their car is going to drive itself especially at low speeds but it's undeniable that look if you have more real estate, just like it's undeniable that you have better visibility because you don't have that real estate on the on the top, it's also undeniable that you have uh, less mobility at lower speed because if you cannot do that, you have less place to, to grab the wheel. You have to go all the way back. And to be fair, in a parking situation, that's not that critical that like you can take your time and just and just reach it. It's just not ideal. But in a, in a quick, like if your car is slipping on the heist and you need to readjust, then that is where it becomes more critical. And I think it's bad. So what happened today is that Elon confirmed that they won't even offer a regular round steering wheel as an option, even though they developed one with the new force touch button and everything. It says it's, it's not going to be an option. Uh, I thought it was just a bad idea. Like, why not just offer it as an option, especially if you already have it, if it's already developed, de develop it, just offer it as an option and people who don't like the yoke don't, don't get the yoke and that's it. When I reported that, I got Tesla fans saying, no, that's dumb, it shouldn't even be an option. What's the benefit of that? Like, what, like, you just don't want, like, Elon needs to be so right that it's even bad not to have an option. Like, come on guys, let's be a little, just a tiny bit more rational. Just so bit. so let's let's meet them halfway. Tesla should sell a round top that you affix, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you affix to the yoke, and that's it. You just yeah, affix yeah. it, and it's you know like thirty bucks. And uh, or I mean, re more realistically, it's like five hundred dollars. But you yeah. you just put it on there, and then you have a full thing. And yeah, put put friends on that. Put. Uh, yeah, here uh, Ventura and uh, all those those brilliant designers because it needs to look good. If you if, if you do that attached thing, it looks weird. What I think is going to happen is we're going to have third party companies right. making regular round steering wheel for the cars. And it would be nice, kind of you know, like they have the horn as a haptic feedback button on the thing rather than the. Come on, guys! Like I I, I realize it takes courage to move the world yeah. forward. This is a very Apple kind of move, like. Yeah. The headphone jack, we don't need it, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. So uh, I kind of wish we didn't have to deal with this stuff. Mm. Anyway, moving forward. But again, make it an option like that. Right. What's the big deal? I, I got thrashed for saying it, sh it, should, it should at least be an option. All right. Uh, we, we're back. Ian Michael Smith, who's been on the show every week talking mm. about his uh, 2013 Model S 60 kilowatt 
The latest is they offered a 25% discount and I have fixed scheduled for August 3rd. The co- final cost will be $17,000. It will be a 90 kilowatt pack. Oh, That's what okay. I said. All right, here we go. 30%, uh, 50% upgrade, uh, which is definitely an upgrade. I still feel this, <laughs> the coming wave of older S pack failures will be an issue for Tesla. Yeah, the 90 watt pack wasn't great. Kilowatt pack wasn't great. Uh, Tesla yeah. is, unless a more reasonable fix is offered by the company. People in general can't afford dozens of thousands of dollars in repairs and scrapping cars after eight years definitely runs contrary to the, and then I, I don't know if you finished. Yeah. Anyway, uh, good for you. 90 kilowatt is definitely an upgrade. Yeah. Um, and at, at $17,000, that's 188 per kilowatt hour. So it's not, it's not a bad cost. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's still a bummer to have to replace your pack at that time with uh, uh, just after the end of warranty too. It's just yeah. bad luck. All right. So we're going to move through these pretty quick. Um, let's see. I think Tesla doesn't want to miss out on any potential infrastructure bill funding. I assume they would need to open up the supercharger network to be eligible. That's an interesting that, point. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we we just saw it happening in Norway. That's why they are saying they're opening it. So uh, we know that uh, Biden is planning some significant funding for charging in the U.S. and that they might the Tesla might have heard, you know, in the grapevines that it might be a requirement for it. That's a yeah, for sure. Good point. Uh, in the semi, how does the weight of the battery in the semi compare to the weight of the engine, transmission, and drive shaft? Uh, well, there is no drive shaft because yeah. the, the motors are at the wheels. But um, well, I, well, I think it, I mean, there's still a, the, the drive axle, I should say. Yeah, the drive axle. That's what that, you mean. But uh, I, apparently, you know, we don't have the actual number. But what what I've heard, it's impressive. Like the the it's pretty close or to a regular tractor. Like it's it's if if it's over, it's not that much over. Uh, and it, it's not that much over that it's an actual issue in terms of uh, uh, of the cargo capacity and, and, and rentability of the of the whole truck. So uh, I was impressed by that. All right, which Tesla supports the newest updates, and how long do you expect uh, support will last for a certain model? I think he's talking about the software, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, there's also like the 3G that all their cars on 3G and, and that's right. going away. There's, there's, I mean, it's, that that's things to be expected, though. It's just technology. I found yeah. my uh, iPhone one the other day that I, I bought, and uh, I mean, I cannot expect that to, to to still use that today and be uh, be worthwhile. Yeah, you kind of have to come up with some fixes for that yeah. yourself, like uh, yeah. you know, using a hotspot or whatever. Yeah. All right, so Miles Davis has an interesting uh, question for us. If you can guess the exact amount of Cybertruck deliveries in 2020, I'll buy an electric T-shirt. The smart guess is zero. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. zero, zero. I think that's my guess too. Yeah, yeah that's a third. So, well, Tesla uh, can always make us wrong by just delivering like a handful of them and having like a delivery event sort of like they did in 2017 for the for the Model 3. Yeah, prove us wrong. That would yeah. be great. Um, and if you, anybody else wants to buy a shirt, you can go to merch.electric.co and uh, get your electric shirt. Um, Zapod, people at the pool, the car fully self-drives itself. The question is, who is responsible? No, not really. Well, it doesn't yet fully drives itself. Like it's Right. Uh, I think Twitter blocking is very petty. I like Tesla, but the fanboy feedback loop is causing ego problems. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's the point I've been making for a while now. Elon is smart, but even the smartest needs help from time to time. Learn to take criticism. Yeah, the thin skin thing. Uh, Cycle Gamer, this was said before. Description, the dis- subscription service. If any buys one FSD, they would upgrade for free. If they give to subscribers an FSD computer, what's stopping them from canceling the next month? Two hundred dollars for a computer. Yeah, we we kind of talked about that. Yeah, we we, we explained that. The credit All thing right. solves the whole problem. All right. Uh, Rich Tier says, agree with Fred talking about the Model 3 owners waiting for subscription service. My Model 3 was made in September 2019, three months after Elon said all cars made. But uh, let's see. You Sorry. lost next yeah. Yeah. My car came with hardware 2.5. I wasn't still not happy about that. I think upgrading to full self-driving for $0 is an, un- an unreasonable expectation. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I agree with you. Like, if I was in the same position... Like Tesla did upgrate one, but and I, I did get it for relatively cheap. 
because uh, I don't remember how I'm, I don't even remember how many how much I paid for that FSD package, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't ten thousand dollars that's for sure. But I I can see myself being in a situation and, and be uh, frustrated because I think I bought my car with full self driving capability. Uh, so Spike forty three says, are upgrades for H hardware two and two point five still coming for their supported features, or are they missing out on some features like speed matching that didn't require vision only? Uh, I'm not I'm not familiar now on uh, uh, what are their feature differences between 2.5. Uh, I was thinking it was mostly I mean if you don't have the package, uh, enhanced auto pilot or full self driving packages, it's mostly like just driving visualization the problem. It's not it's, it's not actual features. Adam Wilcox asks a good question. Do you think GM will put in new chemistry or just replace with old batteries and recovered modules? Um, GM. Uh, in 2019, moved to a different pack, uh, and the, the modules actually have like a 10% more uh, uh, power. So, or, or storage. Yeah, purely so, from cells to purely from GM cells. Yeah, yeah. from the GM cells. So theoretically, uh, LG cells. Theoretically, th those things will be capable of more. Although, you know, who knows if they're going to enable more? It might be a software thing or something. Uh, Adam Wilcox then says, so I'm still not guaranteed a replacement. I have to depend on their diagnostics. Um, it, it, the, the comment that I quoted from, from, from Sean's question to GM that they answered to, you can go on Sean's article today. It has a clear like, question and answer section on it. They did say that every car affected by the previous recall, so the, if you had to have the software say, fixed done, are going to get replacements. Maybe just, like Seth said, though, maybe not a full pack, maybe just uh, a few modules or whatever. But that's what's weird to me is like, so are you, are you saying that there's so many cells affected that there's at least one cells in each pack that has in this issue? That, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. And it's, it's still questionable. Yeah. Um, and it would be, you know, it's frustrating that somebody can't just like get real answers. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you can tell they're like six people away from the answers. Uh, Pedro Salazar says, does Tesla already have anyone replacing Jerome? Can, concerning the semi, the ones that will be delivered this year, which we don't know how many will that will be. We'll have the new 4680 battery packs question mark. Yeah, we just this, we discussed that. We, we assume that there are 4680 in there, but we are not uh, co confirmed it. And uh, I, I've been I've been uh, checking every, every week to see if we there's a new head of uh, heavy trucking in Tesla, and uh, I couldn't find one so far. Might be, but I just like things are pretty opaque at Tesla these days. Yeah, it's getting worse and worse yeah. if, if you're into transparency um all right that's pretty much it the last uh comment is uh cycle gamer who says i hope they at least provide an option for the cyber truck that's yeah, right cyber truck, good good luck with going like off-roading and and uh like rock crawling and, and all that stuff like with with, with that with that steering wheel Yo, unless you want to yeah. self-drive that <laughs> that type of driving i mean good luck. i know that's what's frustrating like that's yeah. part of the fun is yeah. of off-roading is like steering and yeah it's gonna be rough and you know you, there's not a lot of off-roading at high speed where again at high speed there's no problem with the yoke like you, you this is our these are your movement at high speed but low speed these are your movement <laughs> that's not ideal if you have less real estate of the steering wheel yeah anyway that's it, everyone. We appreciate you a lot if you're still listening right now. Thank you. You're a big part of the electric community, and we appreciate you. And we're going to see you same time next week. Have a good one.